You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. Well, you know, we've come to the last week of our, our series on dreams and visions this morning. Um, and, you know, we've seen through the last three weeks that God has been speaking and stirring things inside of heart through this series and through this entire year. Um, and can I encourage you that you've been doing so well to position yourselves here um, this morning and every Sunday to hear from God. You know, we're continually positioning ourselves with open hearts for God to speak, for Him to impart dreams and visions into us. And, you know, we're here this morning because we want God to speak to us and we want um, Him to impart dreams and visions to us. So this morning, I'm speaking about the desires of our heart, how God gives us the desires of our heart and that then He empowers us with faith. He empowers us to believe, to see the dreams and visions come to pass in our lives. Now, have you ever wanted something like really, really bad? You know, for me, this was, was probably about year 11 and I really wanted an iPhone 3. Um, yeah, iPhone 3, I know, right? Um, and so I, I, I was lucky because my dad was upgrading his phone. So he handed down his iPhone 3GS to me. And, you know, it was a great day because it had been building up to this moment where I was like, I'm going to get a new phone. And, you know, then I got it and it was like, but now what? <laughs> it's like it, it makes calls. I can send text messages. But, you know, that thing that I'd been desiring after um, for such a long time, it wasn't really that fulfilling. You know, it was kind of just like, like now, now what do I do? Um, but the desires that God gives us, you know, when we pursue those, when we chase after those and we see them uh, come to pass, that leads to true fulfillment because we're walking in the plans and purposes that God has for us. So this morning, let's read from Acts chapter 2 from verse 17. It says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. You know, notice the, there's a word in there that, you know, it's kind of there over and over and over and it's will. You know, notice that it's will, it's not might. It's not your sons and daughters might prophesy, your young men might see visions. It's that your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. You know, this is a promise from God to each of us, that we will dream dreams, that we will see visions, that God will and wants to speak to each of us personally. And can I encourage you that if you feel like through this year and through this series that you haven't heard from God, to take heart this morning. Because God speaks to each of us in unique ways. You know, the way that you hear from God won't be the same as the person next to you. Because God speaks to us graciously in a way that we can understand Him. You know, He speaks to us in the way that we need to hear Him. You know, personally for me, I'm, I'm not really a very visual person when it comes to dreams. So, you know, I hear about people seeing these like vivid pictures from God. And it's like, that must be pretty cool. But that's not how I experience visions from God. Because when God gives me a vision, it's, it's not an image, but it's Him revealing a thought or, or words or, or something like that. Um, and if, if you are like me, let me encourage you that the word dreams in Hebrew, it's not just talking about a visual dream. It can mean words as well. So maybe you have been dreaming dreams, you just didn't know it yet. And you know, when it says that your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams, you know, that's, that scripture is an encouragement. You know, it's an activation. It's saying, go and do it, to seek it, to ask God for it. You know, when it says dream dreams, that's an active statement, like run marathons. You know, a marathon just doesn't happen. You have, to, you have to run it. It's the same with dreams and visions. You have to dream a dream. You know, God's heart for you this morning is to reveal dreams and visions for your future. 
for your family's future, to speak to you this morning. So I want to ask a question this morning. It's what is your desire? You know, maybe it is to get an iPhone. It's probably iPhone 14, I think, at this point. But the second question is, what is God's desire for you? And can I encourage you that if you don't have a God-given desire, if you don't know how to answer that question this morning, that you can ask Him for it. Now, you can ask God to give you a desire. Psalm chapter 37 from verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. And you know, you might have heard people say things like this before, where, but it's not what it means. It's not saying that by taking delight in the Lord that He'll give us what we want. It's not saying if I delight in the, in, in the Lord that I'll be able to buy a bigger boat. It's not saying if I delight in the Lord that I'll get an iPhone 3GS. Because it's not talking about God fulfilling our carnal desires, our wants. But it's that He's placing desires in our heart. That He's revealing His purposes to us. That He gives us a desire that is so much greater than anything we could ever imagine. You know, it can be something simple, but maybe it is something big. But both of those are okay. You know, we can trust that the desires that God gives to us are perfect. That they're perfectly aligned with His will and His plan for our lives. His purposes for us. So how, how do we ask God to reveal His desires? You know, Psalm 37, it says to take delight in the Lord. So what does, that, what does it mean to take delight in the Lord? You know, it means to to put your trust in God, to wholeheartedly believe and trust that He has the best for you, that His plan for your life is the best plan for your life. And you know, the fact that each of us is standing here today says that we're placing our trust in God. You know, by you being here this morning, you're putting your trust in God. You know, in that scripture as well, it says to dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. You know, that's talking about being a good steward. That's talking about taking care of what God has given to you. You know, it's not just saying to just enjoy the luscious green grass and the rolling hills, but sometimes you have to mow the grass as well. You know, we're called to take care of what God has given to us. And when we do that, He can continue to reveal desires to us. You know, and as we walk out the desires that God has given to us, He will reveal even greater. You know, it's my heart that the desires that God has given to me for now are not the ceiling. You know, it's my desire that what God has placed on my heart is the floor for the next dream that He gives me, that it's the floor for the next vision, that it doesn't stop there, but that's the foundation for what is next. But on the journey, I'm content to continue on the journey with Him. And because it's not about striving for more. It's not about trying really hard for more because our salvation is secure. You know, if you believe in God, your salvation is secure. You know, what you do won't change how much God loves you. But on the journey, I continue to believe to see God move powerfully in every area of my life. And believe that He'll continue to pour dreams and visions and desires into my heart. You know, God wants that for you today. You know, we take delight in the Lord through our devotion to Him. You know, spending time in, in His presence. Spending time in, in prayer, in, in seeking His will and purposes for our lives. You know, the Bible talks about finding the secret place. You know, it's about eliminating distractions and being able to focus our minds and our thoughts, quietening our soul so that we can hear God speak to us. You know, for me, even this week, in, in preparing this message, I, I made the decision that I needed to come down to the church earlier in the morning than I should and normally would. But in that place, I found rest. 
Now, in that place, I found the secret place. And it allowed God to speak to me. It allowed Him to reveal dreams and visions to me because it quietened my soul. You know, maybe for you, it's not getting up early in the morning. There's, it's different for everyone. Yeah, some people are agreeing with me, the, more, <laughs> the nighttime people. But it's about finding the secret place where God is calling you to, where you can quiet your mind and that He can speak clearly. So let's look at an example from the Bible. Um, there's a, a guy called Ananias. And for the Bible scholars in, in the room, this Ananias is not to be confused with the two other Ananiases in the Bible. Um, I think it, Ananias must have been the John Smith of the time because <laughs> there's just so many of them. But this, this Ananias, he's described in Acts Chapter 22, verse 12, it says, In Damascus, a man named Ananias came to me. He was a man who was devoted to God. Now, what a way to be described. Yeah. Out of all the things that Ananias could have been described as, he was described as a man who was devoted yeah. to God. You know, I'd love for that to be the way that I'm described, known for my devotion to God. Yeah. And let me encourage you today that just by being here displays devotion to God. Because we're all on the journey and we can continue on the journey with the strength and the help of the Holy Spirit. You know, the, the, other, the other person in this account is a guy called Saul or later more well known as Paul. And, you know, Saul, he's, he's an angry guy. You know, it's his life's mission to aggressively pursue believers and do whatever it takes to to shut them down, to make life as hard as possible for them. You know, if he was here today, he'd probably be like trying to set the place on fire, I think. He was, he was just an angry, aggressive guy. But we pick up the account in Acts chapter 9, verse 3. It says, As he, uh, Paul, was approaching Damascus, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you'll be told what you must do. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I've shown him, in a, shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorised by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to all the earth. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptised. You know, what a powerful account from the Word. You know, we see Ananias receives a vision from God. And, you know, when we talk about a vision, it's defined as an idea or a mental image of something or an experience in which you see things that do not exist physically. And, you know, biblically, when we receive a vision from God, it's when God reveals something to us that we had not seen before. So in Acts 9, we see God give Ananias a vision. You know, something that he'd not considered, not to mention would probably ever be likely to consider. You know, God's, God calls him to go and see this guy, Saul, who is like his absolute worst enemy at the moment. Like it doesn't make sense. You know, it was something that he hadn't considered. It was something that he hadn't seen before. But God had great plans for Paul. 
So God gave Ananias a desire, one that he hadn't considered before, one that seemed so out there, but one that was God's perfect will for his life. And not just God's perfect will for his life, but for Saul's life as well. One that had great eternal impact. You know, isn't that just a a beautiful picture of how God's purposes for our lives and our desires that he gives to us are intertwined together? Because when we receive a dream or a vision from God, it places a desire in our heart, which then results in action. And then we see God move powerfully upon it. Because we don't go out in our own strength. You know, I love in that account how it was like through Ananias' simple action of acting upon that desire that God had given to him, that God moved powerfully. You know, he didn't have to do anything extraordinary. He just laid his hands on Paul and he prayed and God did the rest. You know, that's the same for us when we follow God's desires that He's placed in our lives. Now, God's desire for your life can have a significant impact on others. You know, we're called to be missional. We're called to share the good news of Jesus with others. And can I encourage you that when God gives you a desire, when He places something in your heart, that it can not only change your life, but it can change the lives of others as well. You know, following God's desire for your life can unlock somebody else's purpose. You know, when Ananias followed God's desire for him, it unlocked Paul's purpose. And it had a significant impact on Paul and, you know, it continues to have a significant impact on us today. You know, Paul who went on to write a majority of the New Testament. You know, something that seems so insignificant, just going to his house and praying, But can I encourage you to don't underestimate the work that God is preparing in someone's life. Don't underestimate what God is already doing in someone's life. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 5 says, After all, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We are only God's servants through whom you believe the good news. Each of us did the work the Lord gave us. I planted the seed in your hearts and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose and both will be rewarded for their own hard work. You know, when Ananias received a a vision from God, you know, I can't imagine that he would have fully understood how powerful Paul's encounter was. You know, I can't imagine that he had all of the information that he probably needed to go in with confidence. But he trusted that God was preparing Paul's heart. He trusted that God was already doing a work there. And when God speaks to us, we can trust that God is laying a foundation for what He is calling us to do. That we can go out with confidence. That we can go out with the understanding that God's plans and purposes for our lives are perfect. You know, another account from the Bible is the story of Abraham. You know, in Genesis chapter 15, it says, Sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision and said to him, Do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you and your reward will be great. You know, when God gave Abraham that vision, he was reminding him of the promise, the desire that he'd already given to him. Because Abraham had been called by God to be the father of many nations. But then he found himself at the age of 99, not having any kids yet, not seeing any evidence of the desire that God had placed on his life. But what I love is that on the journey, despite the winding road that Abraham found himself on, that God continued to encourage him. He continued on the journey with him. He never left him alone. He continued to speak into his life and reveal visions and to remind him of the promise that he had given to him. And in Romans chapter 4, verse 17, it says, 
That is what the Scriptures mean when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. You know, in the New King James Version, it says, the God who calls those things which do not exist as though they did. You know, God can create new things out of nothing. You know, when the desire that God has placed in our life just looks a bit empty at the moment. We can trust and believe in the God who can create new things out of nothing. The God who calls those things which do not exist as though they did. You know, this morning, is there something that you're asking God for or maybe it's a desire that He's already placed on your heart, but all you see is blank space. You know, we can be like Abraham and we can believe in the God who can create new things out of nothing. You know, what this speaks of is that Abraham continued hearing from God. He continued believing and declaring what God had spoken to him about. You know, despite the fact that his situation where he found himself with, was at odds with the vision that God had given to him. Abraham knew that God could call things that do not exist as if they do. You know, when God gives you a desire and it looks different to what you know, you know, how do we believe it? You know, we continue to press into God and we ask God to continue to reveal more to us, to continue to bring revelation into us and Continue to declare that, God, you're the God that creates new things out of nothing. Because can I encourage you that what God says is greater than what we know. You know, what God says is greater than what we've seen before or we've experienced. That what God says is greater than what we've been told. You know, and this morning, maybe you find yourself questioning. It's like, this is good for them. You know, it's good for other people. But I don't know if I believe it for myself. I don't know if I can hear from God or I don't know if God will give me a dream. Know that God, His love for us is so great. You know, this is God's desire for every single person in this place. To reveal dreams and visions, to place desires in your heart. Now, can I encourage you this morning that dreams and visions, they're, they're not the only way to hear from God. You know, they're a way that God speaks to us. But I think sometimes we can get so caught up in looking for a sign from God, so caught up looking for a vivid dream that we miss what God has given to us. We miss the tools that already exist. You know, the word vision, it's found 86 times in the Old Testament and it's found 17 times in the New Testament. Because can I encourage you that what you have today that they didn't then? is the Word of God. You know, you have the Bible to turn to for direction. You have the Bible to turn to, to reveal purpose, to reveal destiny, to reveal desire. You know, in the Old Testament, you know, they didn't have that. They didn't have the Word of God available to every person. You know, God spoke through chosen leaders. He spoke through the priests, through the prophets. But today we have God with us. We have God inside of us. You know, when Jesus came into the world, He made these things available to you and I. That we can experience the presence of God for ourselves. We can experience the presence of God personally. You know, that on Sundays when we come together in worship, that God speaks to us. You know, we join together for prayer meetings. We intentionally position ourselves to hear from God. Can I encourage you this morning that you can hear from God? You can ask God to speak to you. You can dream dreams. You can see visions. You can allow God to give you desire this morning. You know, Psalm 37, I'll read it again. It says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. You know, this morning, can we stand on this Scripture in faith? 
Can we take these from just words that we're reading and believe that God would do that for us this morning? You know, right now, can we, can we take a moment to allow God to speak to us, for God to reveal desire, to place desires in our heart? You know, let's be intentional about keeping our hearts open, allowing the work of the Holy Spirit to take place inside of us. You know, let's pray. You know this morning as we come toward the end of our Dreams and Visions series, what I really felt God asking me and what I believe He's wanting to ask us this morning is that as He's speaking to us, as He's revealing things to us, is what will be my response? What will be my response? You know, Acts chapter 16 verse 9 says, That night Paul had a vision. A man from Macedonia in northern Greece was standing there pleading with him. Come over to Macedonia and help us. So we decided to leave for Macedonia at once having concluded that God was calling us to preach the good news there. Now, how do you respond when God speaks to you? How do you respond when you receive a vision or a dream from God or He places a desire on your heart? Now, what we see Paul do here is he, after they concluded that it was God who was speaking to them, they decided to leave at once. You know, there wasn't any hesitation. You know, they went out with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And they went out with confidence and with boldness. You know, Paul, he understood that God was speaking to him and he, de- he decided to respond with faith. And you know, through these last few weeks, God has been speaking to us. But now it's time that we take our dreams, our visions and the desires that God has placed on our lives into our week, you know, into the world around us, into our community. And know that as we do this, the Holy Spirit goes with us, that He gives us power, that He gives us a moment. If you're visiting today, my name's, my name's Lee. So I'm so excited that you're able to join us today. You know, I... The one thing I, re- I really want to do before we finish this morning is if, if you don't know Jesus personally, God has a dream and a vision for your life. He has a plan for your life. Now, what, what's God's dream? What's God's desire for everybody, for all humankind? Now, God's desire is to know you, to have a personal relationship with you. That's why He sent His Son Jesus to to save the world, to redeem, redeem the world. God, God's desire is to give you vision and purpose for your life. How do you get that? Through His Son, Jesus. That's the entryway, the, the doorway to, to start a life of vision and purpose. How do you do it? It's as simple as all you have to do is call upon His name and believe in Jesus. That's when the real journey starts of following, following everything that He's got for you. Will it be easy? No, it's not, it's not always easy. In fact, sometimes it's really, really challenging. But it's so rewarding to have a personal relationship with God. So this morning, just, just with everyone's eyes closed, just for a moment, just to give some privacy. If you're in this place and you don't know Jesus personally, but you're like, I, I want a, a dream for my life. I want a vision for my life. I want a personal relationship with God. I'm ready to call upon the name of the Lord and believe in Jesus. If, that, if that's you, can I just invite you to, to lift your hand up? Once you put your hand up, you can put it back down. So anyone say, yeah, I, I want that personal relationship with God. I, I want to know Jesus personally. I want His plan for my life. I've tried my own way. I've tried doing it myself. It hasn't worked out too well. I I need Jesus to guide me, give me a plan, give me a vision. Is there anyone this morning say, yeah, that's me? Pop your hand up, put it back down. For anyone online this morning, this is for you as well. This is your moment to respond, to 
faith and salvation in God. Anybody this morning, don't let the moment pass you by. This is, this is your moment to know Him. This is what we're going to do this morning, just with our eyes closed for a moment. We're, we're going to pray a prayer of salvation anyway, because whether you've put your hand up or not, that, it's not about hands this morning, it's about hearts believing in Jesus. <laughs> so if you didn't put your hand up, that's okay. This, pray this prayer that we're about to pray to accept, accept Jesus. If you're online, pray this prayer with us as well. Church, why don't you join me in praying? Dear God, I thank you that you sent Jesus. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised him. I turn from my ways and I turn to you. Forgive me of all my sin. I choose to follow you. Give me a vision. Give me a dream. Give me purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray that that message was a blessing to you. If you made a decision to follow Jesus, first of all, congratulations. We think that that is incredible. And secondly, if you go to gc.org.au forward slash first steps, our team has put together some resources as well as there's some information there for how you can get in contact with one of our pastors because we'd love to encourage you and connect you into the life of the church.